ask your favor on the players and the officials in today's game. Please keep them free for in, from injury and let everything that they do be honoring and glorifying to you. And we lift this up in your son's name. Amen. The Warriors will be the visiting team on the scoreboard. Their head coach on Mount Hope, West Virginia, in his 33rd season is Tim Barton. This is their starting lineup. At guard, a 5'10 sophomore from Charleston, West Virginia, number one, Jonathan Brooks. Also at guard, a 6'0 freshman out of St. Petersburg, Florida, number two, Desmond Conway. At guard, a 6'0 junior out of Beckley, West Virginia, number 10, Jalen Mack. Also at guard, a 5'9 senior out of Flint, Michigan, number 3, Kenyon Meese. And at forward, a 6'2 senior out of Hurricane, West Virginia, number 30, Jacob Tincher. The Chargers from Southeastern Baptist College out of Laurel, Mississippi, are coached by Robert Hall in his second season. He's assisted by Eugene White. This is their starting lineup. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore out of New Orleans, Louisiana, number four, Glenn Grover. A 6'4 forward freshman out of Waynesboro, Mississippi, number 12, Emmanuel Selvin. At guard, a 6'1 junior out of Waynesboro, Mississippi, number 15, Terrence Davis. At guard, a 5'7 sophomore out of Laurel, Mississippi, number 24, Jared Mayer. And forward, a 6'6 sophomore out of Waynesboro, Mississippi, number 32, Orvis Rankings. <laughs> the officials for today's game, Byron Russ, Russer. Charles Howell Jr. and Josh Phillips. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Trinity Baptist College, the home of the TBC Eagles, as we're hosting this year's Bible College National Invitational Basketball Tournament. It's game number two overall, number one in the men's circuit, featuring Southeastern Baptist College and Appalachian Bible College. Southeastern called the Chargers wearing the home whites as they are the higher seed in this tournament. And the Warriors from Appalachian Bible College in the road grays going from the right to the left. And we'll tell you what happened in the women's game between Southeastern and Tacoa Falls in just a bit as we get an opportunity. Southeastern did win that ball game 73 to 60, and the men's bracket is now underway as Southeastern wins the opening tip-off. I'm Ray Bureau, Dean Bureau, our cameraman here for Trinity Baptist College Eagles Athletics and TBC Eagles on YouTube. Glenn Grover with the first shot of the ball game, a little wide to the right, and rebounded by Jonathan Brooks. I'll tell you in a moment how each team has done throughout the 2020 to 21 season. As we have our first three-point attempt of the game, and that one a little too strong from Kenyon Meese. Give you more details, especially for the Chargers fans who are watching us now on the women's game as we get an opportunity in just a bit. That is Orpheus Rankins. Orpheus Rankins with the first basket of the game, and Southeastern is on the board at 2-0. This is game number two of 11 overall in our showcase Bible College NIT tournament. Shot no good, rebounded by Selden. He goes all the way up the court, finds Grover, and Glenn Grover is on the board, and Southeastern leads 4-0. The Chargers are 1-8, and, and the Warriors are 1-7 on the season, both members of the NCCAA. Chargers in the South region and the Appalachian Bible College Warriors, members of the Mideast region, both in Division II. Southeastern Baptist in there with Trinity Baptist College, a host school for whom I work and absolutely love doing the ball games here on TBC Eagles on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from and which team you're rooting for here on TBC Eagles on YouTube. I see your name. I'll say hello and 
Thank you in advance for checking us out here on the live feed. That's Grover with the jump shot. No good. Rebounded by Jonathan Brooks. Ball kept alive by the Warriors. Pull up jumper inside the paint off the rim. No good from Tincher. And so far the Chargers have been all over the rebounds and a great pass up the court. Glenn Grover, the beneficiary. Credit the assist to Jared Naylor. I keep track of the points and the fouls. Everything else is a little too fast for me to keep track with as I'm running my big mouth. That rebound by the Chargers. All the way up the court, one on two, contact, and an offensive foul will be called against Jared Naylor. The player control foul is on number 24, Jared Naylor. First of the game. The man on the mic that you hear over the PA system is Mr. David Jones, the former PA and play-by-play -play announcer for Johnson at University of Florida. He's also worked for Clearwater Christian College as well, and he's a professional radio announcer, and I've listened to him do ball games as TBC went down to Johnson in Kissimmee, and that man can dole it out. Thank you, Mr. David Jones. You'll be hearing him all throughout the tournament. Great pass to the inside, and Orpheus Rankins with his second basket, and Southeastern up to a very quick 8-0 lead. Ball batted around, kept inbounds by Conway, and he pulls up for three, and it's good. Desmond Conway with the Warriors' first basket, and it's 8-3. Southeastern, 17-10 left to go in the first half. Trinity Baptist, the host school, will play tomorrow afternoon. Trinity Baptist women will play tonight. They're going to play Appalachian Bible College in the women's semifinal. That one goes out of bounds, and it will be Southeastern's basketball. The winner of that game tonight will play the Chargers from Southeastern Baptist for the women's Bible College National Championship tomorrow night at 7 p.m., of course, Start times depend on how long the previous games of the day go. This one started right on time. Three-pointer for Pettis off the front of the rim and a nice rebound and a put back by Emmanuel Selden. Long pass up court and a layup from Kenyon Meese. So a quick score from each team with 16-22 left in the first half and Southeastern leading 10-5. I'm Ray Bureau. This is my sixth season with Trinity Baptist College Athletics. Pull up jumper and right down the middle goes Emmanuel Selden. He already has four points, as does Glenn Grover and Orpheus Rankins, and it's 12 to 5. Three pointer from the side, another one for Desmond Conway, his second already, and it's 12 8. These two teams aren't giving me a chance to take a breath. This is my second of what will be 11 games in these three days counting today. Beautiful pass inside to Rankins. And the big man able to get the layup very easily off the glass. 14 to 8. Conway, another three-pointer, another make. He is three for three. Hello to Nedra Tanksley cheering from San Antonio, Texas. Rooting for the Chargers. Southeastern Baptist Sports Network from Laurel, Mississippi. Members of that wonderful franchise tuning in here on the live feed. The rebound and the pass up the court and out of bounds. Conway could not get there quite in time, and the Chargers will get possession leading 14 to 11. Miss Carissa Clark cheering on the Appalachian Bible College Warriors. Thanks for letting us know. There may be some names that I don't quite get to, and I'll apologize in advance if I miss you. It would not be intentional. I can promise you that. 15 minutes left in the half. Ball worked to the right side. Number 14 is Jacoby York, and the Chargers work it to the left, and a long NBA range three-pointer from Terrence Davis. And a six-point lead for the Chargers. Long pass to the corner to Brooks, and he backs this one up to the top of the arc. Number 30 is Jacob Tincher. Warriors slow things down. Shot clock at seven. Bounce pass to Jalen Mack. 
guarded by two. This is Conway, it runs the baseline. Unable to get the short jumper to fall. He's already hit three threes, however, and a very quick transition up the court on the football style pass. Second and third chance, and Jacoby York is able to convert. And a quick 19 to 11 lead for Southeastern Baptist. 14 minutes left in the first half. Been a very fast paced opening six minutes. And that one goes inside and a layup from Jacob Tincher. He's on the board and it's 19 to 13. Another long NBA range three, a little short this time from Davis. A great rebound and a move inside. Pettis, second chance is good from Jamario Bassett. And a 21 to 13 point lead. The head coach of the Chargers, Mr. Broderick Hill in his second season, assisted by Eugene White. Also his second season, the athletic director, Southeastern Baptist College is Bobby Duke, his assistant and the sports information director, Ms. Rhonda Sims. Pull up jumper from Brooks, no good. Rebound by Davis, a long pass up the court and a rejection, Kenyon Meese. However, Kenjin Davis is able to get the ball right back and lay it in. And we have a man down, so an official timeout. We'll see who the gentleman is. He's up on his feet already. Emmanuel Selden. Jordan Hill will come in. It looks like Selden will head off. He hit the floor pretty hard. Isaac Reinhardt in for Appalachian Bible, who was led by head coach Tim Barton in his 28th season at the helm for the Warriors. His managers are Grace Miller and Hannah Buckwalter. And Coach Barton is also the athletic director of Appalachian Bible College. 28 seasons with one team, a phenomenal run for the Warriors head coach. 23-13, a very quick start to the ball game for the Chargers. Conway's first miss in four attempts from three-point range. That's a two from Davis off the rim and pulled down by Kenyon Davis. Ball batted around on the baseline, but then the Chargers come up with possession. 13 on the shot clock. Three-pointer is a little bit too strong from Jordan Hill. Rebound, Jalen Mack finds help in the corner. That three-pointer is blocked. That was Demario Bassett with the block shot, and he takes the pass, lost control, got it back, and lays it in. Demario Bassett. Second basket already for Bassett, and it's a 25-13 lead for Southeastern Baptist. 12 minutes left in the half. That's going to be our second foul of the ball game, and it will go against Davis. His first team foul number two. Hopefully you can hear David Jones pretty well over that PA mic. Charger substitution, Wayne Jefferson, Jr. Marissa Clark saying number three is Kenyon Meese. Thank you for that update. Two teams I haven't seen play. Getting used to their names, but I do appreciate the assistance, Miss Clark. There's a three-pointer from Meese. That is good. Kenyon Meese for three. He now has five points, and it's 25-16 in favor of Southeastern. Nadra Tansky cheering on Jordan of Southeastern. Three point shot from York. It's good. Three point field goal, Jacoby York. So York makes it a 28 16 lead. That would be Jordan Hill wearing number 23, we mentioned a moment ago. And we're going to have a foul. I believe that was Jordan Hill who got called for the foul. We'll find out in just a moment. That is correct. It'll send Jacob Tincher to the line. Tincher, a terrific free throw shooter. 74% on the season and he hits the first of two. With that one, he is now 35 out of 47 according to the Warriors stats page on NCCAA. And he converts them both, giving himself four points and making it a 28-18 game in favor of Southeastern. Standing next to me now is Cardrina Nolan of the women's team. What a game you had, 
I had you at 25 points and called you the player of the game. You can go ahead and take a look at my sheet. Now, my numbers are unofficial, so please keep that in mind. The official one is the third page in. But what an awesome performance you gave, and I got a mic here for you if you'd like to join us. No, that's okay. If you, if you change your mind, let me know. I'll, I got it hooked up, ready to go. Ten and a half left to go in the first half, but what a great job. Did I say your name right, Cardrina? Cardrina Nolan, 25 points. There's a three-pointer from Meese off the rim. Ball battered around and picked up by the Chargers. So you're going to play for the title tomorrow as Jordan Hill goes inside with the layup. You'll play either Appalachian or Trinity Baptist. Hopefully I'm saying it is Trinity Baptist. As a three-pointer from Brooks does not go and the Chargers pull it down. Well, Cardrina, thanks for stopping by. And Bassett for two off the rim and Hill tracks this one down in the corner. Shot clock reset. Ken Juan Davis will back it up near midcourt. There's a three from Jefferson, and this one is off the rim. Wayne Jefferson, Jr. He wears number three for the Chargers. And a pull-up three-point effort from Tincher. Rebounded by the Chargers. Quick transition, and Jacoby York with the finger roll. And seven points for York, 32 to 18 in this very, very fast-paced first half that's had only a couple of stops. Three-pointer does not go for Meese, but he gets his own rebound, goes inside, second chance, no. All the way up the left side. Hall pulls it in, finds Ken Juan Davis in the corner. Jump shot from Bassett, a little bit too strong and pulled in by Tincher. 8.40 left in the first half. Meese for three, a little bit wide. And the Chargers will slow things down with eight and a half left to go until halftime. Davis for three, it's off the rim. And a whistle underneath the basket. It's going Appalachian's way. The Chargers' personal foul is number 23, Jordan Hill. His second, the team's fourth. Number two on Jordan Hill, team foul number four. In case you did not hear, Mr. Jones. 14-point lead for Southeastern Baptist, 32-18 with 8-17 left in the first half. A whole lot of basketball left in this game, plus two more. At the next break, we'll tell you the remaining schedule for today's competition. There's a steal by Ken Juan Davis up the left side of the court. Great feed inside to York, and York will draw the foul and shoot two. We'll see which warrior gets called for the foul. That's Timothy Campbell. Number one for Campbell, number two for the Warriors. Jacoby York at 79% from the line on the season. And that make should put him over 80%. Jerry Naylor back onto the court, one of the starting five. York now with eight points, pending free throw number two, which is good. So he does the good job at the line as he's done throughout the season. 34-18, he now has nine, and we just passed the eight-minute mark of the first half. Very big opening half for the Chargers with still 7.50 left to go. There's a three-pointer for Conway, and he is fouled, and he'll get three free throws. Southeastern personal fouls on number 14, Jacoby York. is his first. For the Warriors, Desmond Conway shooting three. So Conway will shoot three free throws. Hello to Reundria Gilbert, cheering on Jordan Hall of the Chargers, and the first free throw is good. Desmond Conway at 63% on the season from the line. Has three, hit the first, and now the second. 
And unless I'm mistaken, that's 11 points already for Desmond Conway. And here comes number two. This one, or number three, rather, is good. This is a Warriors timeout out. called by Appalachian with the score 34 21 in favor of Southeastern Baptist. And I'm going to take a break myself, and we'll be back in just. And we are back, and we're now going to say hello to Miss Cardriana Nolan. Did I say that right? Cardrina. Cardrina. I said it right throughout the game, though. And like we said a few minutes ago, 25 points, and you and your Chargers are going to play for the national championship tomorrow night. Yes, sir. So tell me, what was the game plan? I don't want you to give away for tomorrow, but what was your game plan against your competition today? Um, really just find the weakness and go from there. Um, and everybody stepped up and did a big role in our win. So that was just that. Now, you've probably seen the gentlemen play throughout the season. Uh, what can you tell us about the team we're watching on the court right now? Who's the player we want to look at? Uh, right there, two. 14, York. That is York for three. It did hit the rim. And nice rebound by Jalen Mack. All right, Cardrina, 25 points. Uh, now, during the game, you're not worried about how many points you're going to score. You're just trying to help your team win. But once you realized how much you had, what did that feel like to know you had such a terrific game today? Well, thank you. Um, just knowing that I can help contribute and be a part of the contribution is what matters and throughout the game like you said I don't focus on points but I know that if I'm not scoring or dominating it'll be tougher so I just know I gotta handle my job and do my role and that's what I do in the meantime Jacob Tincher gets the basket and draws the foul Jared Naylor with his second personal in team foul number five so they have one more to give before the one and one you did it not only offensively. Now, I don't keep track of the rebounds. They just go by too quickly for me. But I know very well you had a good number of rebounds, and we saw you steal the ball a few times also. Yes. All right, Tincher's free throw is good. He completes the three-point play. He now has seven. And you were the obvious choice of player of the game. We didn't have any question about that. Thank you. Tell me about your season. How did you and your team do? Um... We're start, we started off rocky, but you're not, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So we're right. trying to get this championship and then head on to regionals. And Well, you're right about out. finishing. I'll tell you in a moment what I'm talking about. As we have a steal and a loose ball and a foul, it's going to send Tincher back to the line. Now, the last time we had the tournament, Trinity Baptist won it. They had a, a rough first half of the season. But like you said, it's how you finish, and they came up with the Bible College National Championship. And the first of two is good for Tincher. And the foul was called on Orphis Rankins. Did I say his name right? Do you know? Orphis? Okay. Always like to make sure I get that right. Now, obviously, I'm pulling for Trinity Baptist should we play you tomorrow. Because I've been an employee for TBC for six years now. It's all good. You can, you can cheer with us. But personally, though, I hope to see you have a good game as long as we win. Well, thank you. We should see what, what happens. All right, Cardrina uh, almost because there's a girl in the academy named Cardriana Mincy, a similar first name, so almost called you that. Cardrina Nolan with a terrific game earlier today. Any last words before we let you go? No, just tune in tomorrow for the championship game. And All right, you're going to we'll play at 7 o'clock pending the duration of the previous games. Yes, sir. Of course, I'm hoping it's against Trinity Baptist who plays Appalachian Bible at 7 o'clock tonight. All right, Cardrina, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. We appreciate you joining us and wish you a lot of – you got a conference tournament coming up, the South Region Tournament. We could be playing you 
whether we play you tomorrow night or not, next weekend you can see at Tacoa again. Falls. Yes, sir. All right. That All is, right. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. We appreciate you joining us. That is Cardrina Nolan and a three-pointer for Tincture is off the rim. And rebounded by the Chargers. Coming up from behind is Conway, but he's also going to draw a whistle. Made some contact. Of course, I do pause when David Jones makes those announcements. I want to make sure you're able to hear Mr. Jones. He does a phenomenal job and that absolutely beautiful voice from David Jones, the former PBA and play-by-play -play man of Johnson University of Florida. As we have a timeout with five minutes and three seconds left in the half and a 36-28 lead for Southeastern, who is the home team on the scoreboard. And Appalachian is the guest. Assuming no mistakes, I have Desmond Conway leading Appalachian with 12 and Jacob Tincher with 11. Jacoby York with 9, but the Chargers have really spread the scoring around very well. And in case you miss that, Tacoa Falls and Blue Lights at 5 o'clock, pending the duration of this ball game right here. Those are the men's teams playing. And as we said a moment ago, Trinity Baptist women against Appalachian Bible, scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. tonight. We're doing all 11 games of this tournament right here on TBC Eagles. So, Ms. Clark, we appreciate the compliment and the thanks. As Jalen Mack goes up for the short jumper. And the lead is down to six as the Warriors have really put on a nice little run. And they're going to get the ball back after the offensive foul. And offensive foul on the Chargers, number 32, Orfos Rankings. It's his second personal foul. Number two on Rankings. And what was a 16-point deficit just a few minutes ago is down to six, 36-30. Chargers lead with 4.27 left to go. Jonathan Brooks on the court for Appalachian. Seventeen on the shot clock. A nice spin move and a layup is good for Tincture. He has thirteen and the deficit now down to four. Thirty-six, thirty-two. Just now hit the four-minute mark. Up the left side and underneath go the Chargers. Davis hits Magruder, and the Quadric Magruder with his first basket makes it again a six-point lead for Southeastern as that ball's batted out of bounds. It'll stay with Appalachian. Shot clock at 22. 3.39 left in the first half. I'm Ray Bureau. Dean Bureau works the camera for us here at Trinity Baptist College, and that ball is out of bounds. Dean, my son... About to turn 21, just a couple of weeks. He's a junior at Jacksonville's University of North Florida. Three thirty left in the first half. 38-32. Southeastern Baptist leads Appalachian Bible, and that one trickles out of bounds. It was knocked away, so it will stay with the Warriors. Substitution, new man on the court is number four, Mac Herbert. Warrior substitution, number four, Mac Hamer. And Isaac Reinhardt will head to the sidelines, or rather, Timothy Campbell heads to the sidelines. 3.20 left to go. Long three-pointer for Tincher, right at the shot clock buzzer. Comes up a little bit short. Number zero is Khalif Mears. His pass batted away, and it will be Appalachian's ball with three minutes and eight seconds left in the half. And as you see on the bleachers, filling up. Of course, we are following our guidelines, making sure everybody stays safe. 
There's a three-point effort by Herbert. Does not go. Just past the three-minute mark. Rover finds Magruder. Does not go, however. And a jump shot by Kenwan Davis. His second score, and it's a 40-32 lead for the Chargers. Two and a half left to go until halftime. Six-point lead for Southeastern Baptist. Mack outside the arc. Has a man open in the corner. Ian McAllister guarded by Davis. Shot clock at two. And that ball knocked away by Glenn Grover. And a long pass up court to Mears. And an easy layup puts Khalif Mears on the board. Ten-point lead now for the Chargers. They got down to four and then have scored six in a row. Two minutes left until halftime. And a good reverse underhand layup by Jalen Mack. 42-34 and a very fast-paced first half. Jake Fanatic letting us know he's watching on the live feed. Finger roll from Mears, no good. And the Warriors will slow things down, look for a good chance to get off a shot. Ball knocked out of bounds, but it will stay with Appalachian. Two new Warriors head on to the court. Kenyon Meese and Timothy Campbell. Warrior substitutions, number three, Kenyon Meese. Number 11, Timothy Campbell. McAllister and Herbert make way for the two men on the court with a buck 34 left until halftime and a 42-34 lead for the Chargers. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Warriors. So Southeastern will inbound with a chance to extend a current eight-point lead. Mears guarded by Tincher. Bounce pass to the baseline. Turn around. Jumper does not go. Magruder, tough luck because he made an excellent move. The ball spun around inside the rim but just would not drop. Coming up on the one-minute mark, and we hit it right now. Great pass inside and a foul. Glenn Grover called for his first. He got all ball with his hand, but the body contact was a reason for the foul, and that will send Tincher to the line. Tincher has already hit five free throws in five attempts, 13 points, assuming I have no mistakes. And the first of these two is good. Substitution number 13, Rasad Pettis. Tincher comes in at 74%, but he's now six for six and 40 out of 52 overall on the season. Number two of this sequence is good. Seven in a row and 15 points for Jacob Tincher. 42-36 in favor of Southeastern Baptist. 50 seconds left. Pump fake by Magruder, guarded by Tincher in the corner. Bounce pass to Davis. Goes inside the paint. Pull-up jumper is good. Kenwan Davis. 44-36, 31 seconds to go until halftime. Been a very exciting first half. Very few clock stops and a whole lot of points scored as this one's knocked out of bounds. Mirrors on the defense. Appalachian will keep control. 15 on the shot clock, 22 on the game clock. 10 seconds to shoot. Shot clock now down at five. Inside to Mears, and he gets the ball to roll around and drop in. Seven points, five seconds left. Mears underhand, no, and that'll bring us to the halftime intermission. Score the Chargers 44, the Warriors 38. Halftime score, Southeastern Baptist College Chargers 44, Appalachian Bible College Warriors 38, Jacob Tincher with 15 points for the Warriors, and Jacoby York with 9. And we'll give you more point totals when we resume in about 12 minutes as we get set for halftime. And we'll be back. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Trinity Baptist College. As you see on the scoreboard, the home team is Southeastern Baptist. The Chargers lead Appalachian Bible 44 to 38 in a very fast-paced, high-scoring first half. We'll give you the point totals in a moment, but while we have this opportunity, here's the remaining schedule for tonight. The next game scheduled to start at 5 is the men of Tacoa Falls College against Blue Lights College. And then the women's Trinity Baptist College Eagles against the Appalachian Bible College Warriors. That game is scheduled to begin at 7. And as we keep saying, depends on how long the earlier games go. On Friday at 1 o'clock, that's tomorrow, the women's third place game will be Tacoa Falls College and the loser of tonight's matchup between Trinity and Appalachian. At 3 o'clock tomorrow, Trinity College of Florida will play this winner that you're watching right now. At 5 o'clock, the number one seed Trinity Baptist College Eagles will take on the winner of Tacoa and Blue Light, which is next. And then the women's championship game, Southeastern Baptist College is already in and the Lady Chargers will take on either Trinity Baptist or Appalachian Bible. Then on Saturday at 11, the men's fifth place game. At 1 o'clock, the men's third place game. And at 3 o'clock, the men's championship game in the 2021 National Invitational Basketball Tournament. And we do this tournament in honor of Coach Pat Milligan, who used to be the head coach of the TBC Eagles. I believe this is the 16th year of the tournament that he himself founded. And the last time we hosted, we were able to give Coach Milligan a terrific retirement send-off. He still works full-time for Trinity Baptist College Athletics. He has retired from coaching duties, but is still very active for the Eagles. Ten players have scored points for Southeastern Baptist College. Two for Khalif Mears. Two for Naquadric Magruder. Glenn Grover has four. So does Emmanuel Selden. Jacoby York is the Chargers leader with nine. Terrence Davis has a three-pointer. Jamario Bassett and Jordan Hill have each hit two field goals. And six points each from Orphis Rankins and Kenwan Davis. That's a total of 44 for Southeastern Baptist. And for Appalachian, Desmond Conway has 12, but he trails Jacob Tincher with 15. And Kenyon Meese has 7, and Jalen Mack has 4. That's assuming no mistakes. My number's unofficial. We have not had a missed free throw at all throughout this game. Jacoby York is 2 for 2, and that's all Southeastern has had. Meanwhile, Jacob Tincher has hit all seven of his attempts, and Desmond Conway is three for three himself. Getting it done at the line are the Warriors, and that's been a big reason they cut what was a 16-point deficit that down to four at one point just before halftime, and as you see on the scoreboard, it's a six-point lead now for Southeastern Baptist as we're just about ready to resume play. So I'm going to pause right here and be back when the gentlemen are ready to inbound for the second half. All right, we are ready to resume play. Warriors have possession, trailing by six. And if the second half is anything like the first half, get comfortable in your chair because this has been fantastic. And if you miss that first half, I hope you go back and watch the video a little bit later on after we finish play tonight. 44-38, Chargers lead there in the home whites. Warriors in the road grays. And the crowd still filling in Trinity Gymnasium. Three-pointer for Meese. It's good. He now has 10, and the lead is down to three for the Chargers. And a beautiful pass inside to Rankins. 
And he's able to very easily get over his defender and drop this one in. 46-41 as the ball goes out of bounds off Jalen Mack. And Southeastern will have possession at midcourt. Second half, less than a minute in, in case you're just joining us. It is 46-41 Chargers. Ball battered away by Tincher. Now Appalachian with a chance to cut it down to three or possibly two. Of course, four-point play, very possible if there's a foul on a three-point shot. Going inside is Brooks, pulls up, but it's knocked away by Selden. Ball batted around. Conway is able to keep control for the Warriors. Three-pointer from Brooks off the rim. And Davis brings it up court. Bounce pass stolen away by Jacob Tincher. And Tincher fed Conway, and Conway lost control of the ball. And a long pass all the way up the court. Rankins now with 10. And really a good job by Appalachian not picking up the unnecessary foul, giving the Chargers what they earned. 48-41, Chargers lead. Three from Tincher, right down the middle. He now has 18. Mack thought about it, found Tincher wide open, and Tincher, that's his first three of the game, but 18 points to lead everybody on the court. But again, as we said before halftime, or right as we started halftime, the Chargers have spread the scoring around very well. Ten players have scored points. There's a three. It's good, and that's Glenn Grover. He now has seven, and it's a one-point lead. That three by Tincher, I failed to mention, put Appalachian ahead. But now, Chargers lead by one. Great pass inside to Tincher, and what a move, and he gets the layup off the glass. 20 points for Tincher. Coming up on the 17-minute mark of the second half, and it's 51-46. That ball knocked away. Emmanuel Selden on the defense, or rather on the offense, tried to get possession, but Chargers are going to keep the ball. Magruder, Bassett, and Davis back onto the court for Southeastern Baptist, led by Coach Broderick Hill. I don't have the shooting percentage numbers. That's being kept over at the scorer's table. But I can tell you both teams are shooting the ball very well and have high percentages as Magruder gets his second basket of the game. He now has four, and the Chargers have put the lead back up seven at 53-46. And a long three from the corner. No good from Conway. Rebound by Bassett. Very fast transition up the court. Slam dunk attempt, no good. A whistle before the second chance and a technical foul, a technical foul will be called on Magruder. Four, or check that, Glenn Grover for hanging on the rim. That is his second personal foul and it will send Jacob Tincher to the line. And as we said earlier, he has hit all seven of his free throw attempts. One shot for Tincher. Tincher with 20 points. At the moment, 53-46 pending this foul shot from Jacob Tincher. This one is good. So that's 21. Warriors also get the ball all the way back at the other end of the court. So now trailing by six could make it four, maybe three. 16-34 left in the second half. Tincher feeds Brooks, three-pointer in and out. And grabbed over near the corner by Davis. Bounce pass to another Davis and a great feed to Bassett. Shamario Bassett. Bassett with the layup, six points and a 55-47 lead for the Chargers.
And there's a three-point effort from Brooks off the front of the rim. Mears all the way up the court, coast to coast, and the layup. He now has four, and it's 57-47. Chargers led by just one point a couple of minutes ago, and they have scored nine in a row. Going inside is Cole Garrison. He will draw the foul and shoot two. Fouls called on Nate Quadrick Magruder. It'll be Cole Garrison shooting two shots. Garrison at the line. Three for four on the season, and the free throw is off the front of the rim. Garrison. Misses his first. Jacoby York, returning for the Warriors, Ian McAllister. And Garrison gets free throw number two. It is off the back of the rim and rebounded by Kenwan Davis. That's a three-pointer and good from Mears. And the Chargers lead 60 to 47. Going inside, but getting called for the charge will be Jacob Tincher. His first team foul number one of the second half. This is a Warriors timeout. Appalachian calls a full timeout. That's a first timeout called by either head coach. 60 to 47, and we'll be back in just a minute. And we are ready to resume play. As you see, 60-47 in favor of Southeastern Baptist College. And joining us now for the next couple of minutes, Trinity Baptist College head coach and athletic director, Mr. John D. Jones. Coach, we've had an exciting ball game and earlier in the women's bracket, two really good Southeastern Baptist College teams on the court. Very good. Uh, they've uh, brought two athletic, you know, talented, well-coached basketball teams to this tournament. Uh, I was really impressed with the Southeastern women's team. Uh, just They have all the pieces uh, to really win this thing. Uh, great point guard play, tremendous shooter, uh, uh, a center that can really, uh, you know, attack from inside the paint. So I was really impressed with her. And then and then this Southeastern men's team is very athletic as well. You see number 14 with a great follow there. Well, York made a good rebound and got it right back in to extend the lead to 15. Coach, this has been a very fast-paced game and a lot of scoring. It has, and, uh, you know, credit to Appalachian. Um, you know, they're not as athletic or have as much size, uh, but they play with great toughness and resiliency. They play together. Um, you know, Tim Barton, is, I've always been impressed with how, you, how hard he gets these guys to play, and, and tonight has been no exception. Uh, see if they have another run in them here to make this a ball game down the stretch here. Uh, Appalachian had come back to make it a one-point game, but yeah. the Chargers have scored, looks like, if I'm counting correctly, 14 in a row since then. Yeah, yeah. 62-47, a 15-point lead, 14-15 left to go. Coach John D. Jones of the Trinity Baptist College Eagles got the number one seed, and you're off today, but you're going to play a tough Trinity College team tomorrow, or actually they're the number two seed. Right. Uh, so much going on, it's hard to keep track sometimes. You're going to play the winner of Tacoa Falls and Blue yep. Lights, which comes up next. Right, right. Yep. So we'll, we'll have our guys in the stands to, to watch it tonight and, uh, you know, check them out. And uh, obviously we're very familiar with Tacoa. Uh, we've had two very, very close. Just played them here last games. week. Exactly. Uh, and and me, they did give you two really good ball oh games. Oh, yeah. To me, they're one of the better teams in, in the South region. And, 
and uh, certainly one of the teams that can win this tournament. Um, haven't seen Blue Lights play yet, so I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see what they're about. So. Kenwan Davis with the short jumper, giving himself eight points. And Coach, ten different Chargers have scored points. Yeah, obviously a very well-balanced attack. Um, nice spin move by Brooks and a very, very quick transition bullet pass to York. You can see they've been running that sideline break the whole game. They really like to try to get it up the floor quickly and, and attack from the wings as fast as they can. All right, that foul's called on the floor against Kenwan Davis. That's his second. So the Warriors will inbound. 13-17 left, ball almost got away, and tight defense by the Chargers. Both teams, I don't have the percentages, but both teams are really shooting the ball well. Yeah, it seems to be, and that's just, And coach, it's good to have Mr. David Jones on the mic. He's helping me out a lot, because sometimes it's hard to tell exactly who does what when they, the guys bunch up. And, you got a professional announcer over there, and I'm enjoying hearing him. Absolutely. Uh, we've known David for many years. Uh, he used to be the play-by-play -play live stream and uh, public address announcer for Clearwater Christian back in the day, and then went on over to Johnson University of Florida, helped them out for a few years. So he's been very familiar with the South region and the history of the South region for a long time. And it was through, through those years that he and I built a personal relationship. And so, um, you know, we were actually a couple weeks ago down playing Trinity College of Florida, and he came out to the game, and I said, hey, why don't you come on up and do the PA for us? So we're, we're glad to have him here. Well, he's been very helpful to me. I got a chance to meet him. I've seen him do the games when TBC would go down to Johnson, and I knew I recognized him. It took me a minute to place him, but glad I finally got a chance to meet him. He's a terrific announcer and seems like a terrific gentleman, too. Yes, yeah, great guy, really loves the Lord, always been in it for the right reasons. And, and you know, we offered to, to pay him to come do this, and he said, Coach, I want to do it as a ministry, you know, to these Christian college teams. He really believes in Christian higher ed, and so we're glad for his support. Jump shot, no good. Second chance, no. Third, yes, and that is York. He now has 15 points, and I wanted to say a moment ago that the Warriors have hit 13 out of 13 from the line. 100%. You don't see that a whole lot. Wow. And there's a great three-pointer from Ian McAllister. Yeah, He's on the board. Three. That coach, there hasn't been a missed free throw yet this entire game. That's amazing. Very impressive performance by both teams. Pass inside. Mears able to keep possession and get the layup. He now has nine. It's 72 to 54. 11.40 left to go. Appalachian is a very dangerous three-point shooting team, though, so. Rejection by Davis. Warriors keep possession. Contact, no call, and now a foul will send Conway to the line. There's certain, certainly plenty of time left for them to be able to make a, another run here, another push. But, but, Ray, one thing I'll say is that um, Dave was looking forward to meeting you as well. Uh, over the years, as he's begun to listen to our broadcast and things like that, and we were down talking, he's like, Who, who's the guy you got doing your games now? He's tremendous, really enjoys listening to how you how you represent us. And and so uh, he was very complimentary of, of your professionalism well, as well. I thank him for that. Of course, I thank you for giving me this opportunity six years ago and allowing Dean to join us here. And I don't say this just as a father, but Dean does a great job with that camera. Does a great job, and we've, we've appreciated his loyalty and, and uh, uh, throughout the years. And two more free throws. Again, not a single miss from the line for either team. And you consider that in the 60% is considered good. Mm -hmm. We've got 100% free throw shooting today. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen a game that's gone all the way to the end like that. We'll see if it finishes up that way. I remember a gentleman from Piedmont International named Nash Carter mm -hmm. came down here <laughs> and in just the second half alone went 24 for 25 at the line, and unfortunately they beat us that game by maybe two or three points. Why are you reminding me of that, Ray? Because <laughs> you just don't see... 96% no, no, free throw shooting. Nash Carter was... Only Larry Bird can do that. Nash Carter was one of the toughest players we ever coached against and played against. And a terrific young man as well. 
very talented. But yes, he was one of the best free throw shooters in our region. And I remember that game. Best all too free well. throw shooter I ever saw, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your team's done a much better job at the line this year, especially down the clutch. Sam Battle, who's had himself a couple of fantastic games during especially your eight game winning streak you had. Yeah, yeah. Sam's really grown and coming to his own uh, this season, especially the second half of the season. And um, we're pleased with how he's developing. And he's really started to learn what it takes to take your team and put it on your back, you know, when we needed him to. That's Khalif Mears Khalif keeping Mears. control and getting the basket. Coach, you won 10 out of your last 11, including eight in a row. A very young but extremely talented team you have this year. Yeah, we're, we've been getting better every game, and uh, we still struggle a little bit sometimes offensively uh, with playing together. But um, I think we've really learned how to how to play together defensively. That's really been our identity this year. Quick transition and a layup by York. We thought he was going to pull a Kafumba Tori on there, but yeah. he thought better of it. It looked like he probably didn't have the feel for it and yeah. did the wise thing and just got the two points. Yeah, that, that, no doubt. And uh, But they are very good in the open court. You can just see. Of course, Kafumba Tori loves to complete that alley-oop like Chandler Rivers did when he was an eagle here. Yeah, we loved we loved throwing him to Chandler. It was amazing, especially being only 5'11", how he could get up there and go get it. But, uh, yeah, it's been fun having uh, having Kafumba on the receiving end this year. And did I hear correctly that he hadn't played organized basketball before this year? Never, never. So You can never tell by watching him. Just playing in the park, and, uh, yeah, we were very fortunate to. So not even on a rec ball team or anything? Maybe, that, maybe a little bit of that, but certainly not high school, organized high school or organized college. Well, I would never have guessed that if I hadn't heard it. Yep. Ten minutes left. Turnaround jumper by Grover. It's good. Of course, Kafumba is one of your leading scorers. I think he trails only Sam Battle in points per game. Right. And and the best rebounder in the region, you know, for sure. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. As a backcourt violation, we'll give the ball back over to the Chargers, who lead 78-56. We just passed the midway point of the second half. And, Coach, you get the bye week today, playing tomorrow, but you're not done when this is over. You have the South Region Tournament next week. You're going to see many of the same teams. And as you and I have said many times, any team is capable of winning the tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt about it, especially this year. We feel like the, the parity. I was just talking to Leonard Epps from Dakota Falls earlier, and, we were both in complete agreement, just the parity top to bottom uh, in the South region this year. Uh, you know, whoever's going to be peaking, and whoever's going to be shooting it well, defending at a high level going into that tournament next week is probably going to be the team that comes out on top. Yeah, in my six years with you, this is probably the most competitive South region that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree Jacob with that. Tincher just got his 22nd point of the game, and he alone is 9 for 9 from the line. Yeah, he's a special player. You're just watching him, and I don't know his back. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but somebody was telling me earlier on the sideline over there that they thought that he was a, a Division One transfer. Uh, I'm not sure which school, but uh, you can tell he's a highly skilled player. Very oh, tough. That's a first miss from the line of the game. for wow. anybody here today. Wow. Hello to Tommy Hudson, the father of Jordan Hill of the Chargers. And Coach, I like seeing those names pop up on the screen, letting us know they're watching. Yeah, it's great to see uh, the fans, especially of other teams who are watching from around the country, you know, tune in and comment. And, you know, welcome to the broadcast and hopefully are enjoying some great basketball. That was Wayne Jefferson with that last shot, making it 82-57. Chargers look like they're starting to pull away as we're now under nine minutes to go. Three-pointer for Brooks. It's good. Chandler Brooks for three. Yeah, Five points for Brooks and Coach Jones. Any last thoughts? I know you have to get ready for the rest of tonight and talk to your team about tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We're just looking forward to the, you know, continuing, uh, you know, watching some great basketball this afternoon, this evening. Looking forward to our women's team, Trinity Baptist College women, uh, go, tipping it off tonight at 7 p.m. With a chance to repeat as the Bible College NIT Absolutely. champions. Absolutely. And then, and then one of the highlights of this tournament is the three-point dunk competition. So that will be going on uh, right after the last women's game tonight. 
and it's something that all the players really enjoy and get involved with, and so we're looking forward to that as well. All right. But thanks Thank for having me on. Thank you to Coach John D. Jones, the head coach of the men's basketball team and the athletic director here at Trinity Baptist College. Tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m., taking on the winner for the next game between Tacoa Falls and Blue Lights and a team with a legitimate chance at winning another South Region title and heading to the NCCAA National Tournament, which they did two years ago. Eight minutes left to go, 82-60 in favor of the Chargers. And a whistle will send Jefferson to the line with a chance at a three-point play. So Wayne Jefferson will shoot one free throw and a chance at a three-point play with 7.59 left and a 24-point lead for the Chargers, now 25. 85 to 20, and that gives Jefferson his fifth point. Brooks with the spin move, feeds the ball outside to Meese. Meese goes to the line, and the jumper a little bit too strong and pulled in in the corner by Emmanuel Selden. And we have some contact underneath, and it looks like Meese will be called for the foul. And while we have an opportunity, we're going to say hello to Trinity College of Florida head coach. And Oh, hang on, coach. Let me see the headphone because we got it tangled up here. Let me untangle you. Well, it looks like <laughs> I'm just making it worse. So. There you go. This will work. And, Coach, I always have trouble saying your name. Appendizio? Opitasano. Opitasano. I probably said Appendizio every time. <laughs> Sorry about that, but. Yeah, it's a short little Italian name. Defending South Region champion Trinity College of Florida Tigers. You are the number two seed in this Bible College NIT. You're going to play tomorrow afternoon. See uh, your opponent. You're waiting to see who wins tonight. You're going to play this winner right here that we're watching. And at the moment, it looks like it's going to be Southeastern with a 25-point lead. Appalachian, though, has put a couple of good runs together. Yeah, Appalachian has a history of shooting the ball very well, and that continued this year. But uh, Southeast has got a very talented squad. Well, like I told Coach Jones, I don't have the percentages available, but both teams have to be way over 40%. They're both hitting a lot of shots. You're right about that. The both teams playing hard. Teams are making shots, and it's, it was a good ball game. Hello to Sparkle Hill cheering on the Chargers as we have a whistle that will send Cole Garrison to the line for two. Coach, with a whole lot going on, I haven't been able to keep up with every team in our region. How have you done in your last few games? Well, we've been battling a couple injuries, so we've been we've been on a little bit of a downslide, but um, we do have everybody healthy for this tournament, and we we look to br bring it. Well, we've given you a couple of uh, pretty good games this year, but we could meet you in this championship. We could meet you up again next week in the South Region tournament, and as. I've said many times, and Coach Jones and I have talked about, a very, very well-balanced South region that anybody can win. Well, there is no doubt about that. that uh, each team is very competitive in our league, and you just got to come ready to play every night. There's no gimmies. And most of the games are going to be very close. You're, you're going to have your occasional one-sided game. We did that to Pensacola early in the season. They came back and beat us a couple of weeks ago, broke our eight-game winning streak. Yeah, Pensacola, another good ball club. You guys play hard every night out. So, you know, like I said before, anybody in our league is dangerous. And there goes Emmanuel oh, Selden. Ten Chargers have scored points. And they lead 87 to 60. And, Coach, with so many players scoring points, this just shows the team 
oriented approach that Coach Hill has with his team. Oh, there is no doubt. He looks like he's going ten, at least 10 deep, and uh, you can't really tell a difference between the starting, starting five and the five that came in after him. Jacoby York leads with 17, but Khalif Mears has 11, as does Glenn Grover. But Jacob Tincher for Appalachian, 22 points. And do you realize there's been only one missed free throw the entire game? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We'll take that when we play. That would be a blessing. Well, Trinity Baptist has really improved its free throw shooting. Trinity College, you're pretty good at hitting from the line as well. We're going to see you play tomorrow afternoon. Of course, you're waiting to see whom you're going to play just as we are. But it looks like we are going to play the winner of Tacoa Falls and Blue Lights, which is next. And I'm mixing you up. Um, there's so many games to keep track of. And I even have it written down. I'm reading it. <laughs> no, we, we've got the winner of this one. You guys got uh, Blue Lights and Tacoa Falls. Right. And I even wrote them down in order, too. 87 to 60 with just under six minutes left. Coach, of course, I don't want you to give away your game plan, but what are you looking to do throughout this tournament? Score more than our opponents. Yeah, that's really all that matters. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see a team shoot 55%, end up losing. You'll see a team shoot 30%, end up winning. As yes. long as you your side has more than their side, that's what matters most. Yes, that's the name of the game. And there he is again with another one. That's Tincher with 25 points for Jacob Tincher. And even in a losing effort, I have no problem calling someone on the team that doesn't win player of the game. And it looks like that's going to be Tincher. Well, he had a strong tournament last year, and it looks like he's continued to his strong play. 89-63. And a two-point shot. If I saw that correctly, I think that was Jalen Mack, number 10. That was. You got it. Good go. Good call. I'm glad to have David over there. He's <laughs> keeping me straight. Now, of course, I got the video feed on. It's a few seconds behind, so I'm able to take a quick peek in case I miss something. So I know how to cheat myself. Well, you do a good job. You do a good job. Every time we've been here, you've always been on the ball. And uh, I know if we need anything, we come into you. 89-65. Ooh, close miss Great at move the basket. By Mac. Just couldn't get it to roll. Sorry, coach. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Pull up jumper from York. Now he Jordan has. Hill. Uh, Jordan Hill, rather. He has six points. York has 17. He is definitely Southeastern's player of the game. As we're going to have a foul, looks like going against Kenyon Meese. Now there have been only a few fouls by Appalachian. Okay, so Jordan Hill, so apparently I got that one wrong. That's going to happen once in a while. That's going to happen. Yeah, I always feel good that when I see the big pros on TV make the same mistakes I do. I don't feel so bad. Though. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Kenyon Meese at the line. He's two for two, 12 total points. 91-65, and the Chargers have a chance to hit triple digits. A very good, legitimate chance. Meese gets his first, giving him a baker's dozen. Warrior substitutions, Jonathan Brooks and Desmond Conway. Four and a half left, and the Chargers need just nine more points to get 100. Well, the way they've played up to this point, I, I would assume that 100's in their sights. In and out goes free throw number two. It's only the second miss of the entire game. And a nice feed and a very gentle lay-in by Magruder. 93-66, 4 12 left to go. Pull up jumper for Meese. Gets the bounce and, and drops it in. He has 15. Very fast transition as we've seen the entire game. And Bassett able to pop that one in to put himself into double digits. The Chargers now have five men with at least 10 points. Don't see that a whole lot. No, they're pretty balanced, and they seem like they're getting any shot that they're looking for. Ooh, let's hope he's all right. That's Jordan Hill. He hit the floor very hard, and fortunately it was not the head, and I would not be popping up like that. 
I hear you, I hear you, but these young guys have a quick way of recovering, and he pops right up. Cole Garrison gets called for the foul, and that's going to send Hill to the line. He hasn't had a free throw attempt. In fact, Southeastern shot only three free throws, but they made them all. Yes, they've had a pretty solid night shooting the ball, whether it's been inside, outside, at free throw line. Hill's only two for two on the season, according to their stats page in NCCAA, but he hits the first. Stroke looked good on that first one, so. Have a substitution. Re-entering for the Chargers, Jacoby York. York back in. We talked about Tincher. He's averaging 20 points per game, so no surprise in seeing that, that he has 25. Yeah, another, another outstanding game from another outstanding player. 96, 68. Three and a half left to go. Bounce pass inside to Campbell. Turnaround jumper off the back of the rim. And pulled in by York. I think the size of Southeast has given uh, Appalachian some problems They today. have a big height advantage. You they are do. correct with that. Shot from Jefferson off the rim. Our women's teams this year also, the South region, much more even than it had been in years past. Pensacola usually, with Bob Jones, the cream of the crop, but they're both playing well, but every women's team also has really improved as well. Yeah, yeah, the, the women's, you know, just as we were talking about the men's teams earlier, the women's teams are pretty balanced, and, uh, you know, every game is going to be a war. Looking forward to those tournaments next weekend. I think they're both being played at Tacoa, if I'm correct with that. I, be I believe you're correct on that. I know the men's are for sure. Couple of new Warriors onto the court. Braden Story, he wears number 23. Gabriel Miller is number 13. You see him at the lane as Brooks's free throw does not go. Brooks has seven, and we're under three minutes left. 96-68. And going inside, if I saw that correctly, yes, I did, Ken Juan Davis. He now has 10. That's six players for the Chargers in double digits. Brooks pulls up. That was a two-point effort and rebounded by Magruder. One more basket will put Chargers into triple digits. Turnaround Good. jumper off the side of the rim and picked up by McAllister. Two and a half left. That ball knocked away. Brooks pulls it in. There's a three-pointer for McAllister, a little too strong. Another three by Brooks. It's good. Jonathan Brooks for three. He now has ten. And, Coach, what do you think of the new three-point line that was supposed to start this year, probably going to be next season? Well, you know what? The, the players are getting more and more talented. The, the range is improving, so I, I think it'll be a good thing overall. You notice a lot of them will stay behind that arc anyway. There is no doubt. If they get to watch what the NBA does, and uh, you know they're putting in the work themselves, extending that range. You know, a lot of their shots are from NBA distance, and they go through. And you know, we have the high school and the junior high play on this court too, and. I've seen many 6th, 7th, and 8th graders hit from that new college line. Well, I think the, the the way the game is being played, things are getting moved out further and further. Seven players now in double digits for the Chargers. 100 to 71. Magruder got the 100th point. Oh, good hustle by Appalachian player. There's a long pass. A hard pass is knocked away with a minute 25 left. And, Coach, seven players in double digits. I don't think I've seen that before. I'm not sure if I have either. That's uh, Now, that's assuming no mistakes on my part because, you know, I'm not official. No, I think we're going to have to put it in the book. I will, I'm going to go with your numbers. Um, they look like they have a talented group, and uh, they look like they can all put the ball in the basket. 120 left to go. 100 to 71 is the score. And a feed inside to Magruder, giving him an even dozen. The assistant Davis. 102 to 71, coming up on the one-minute mark. 
Number four is Mac Herbert. He goes inside the paint, gets the nice layup finish. the ball. Nice finish. It's nice to see the guys who don't get a whole lot of minutes when they get their chance take advantage and put points on the board. There's a long three-pointer we were just talking about. This one had the distance right but missed to the right. And a quick pass up court to Davis who feeds York. And if York can get off one more shot, he could top 20. He has 19 right now. I'm not sure if he'll get another chance as things are slowed down with only about 30 seconds left. Number 23 is Brandon Story, oh. and that one does not go. Bounce pass to Davis, got away. Davis from inside the paint, drops this one in. He has 12. Well, Coach, we want to thank you for joining us here. We look forward to seeing you play tomorrow, and maybe our two teams will meet up in the title game on Saturday. Well, it's been a, it's been a great pleasure to be able to right, spend time with you. Say your name for me one more time. It's Rob Opitasano. Rob Opitasano. I'll try to remember that when you guys take the court tomorrow. Appreciate you joining us All as right. time has expired. Thank you again. Set 106 to 73. And again, seven points or seven players in double digits. Khalif Mears 11, the Quadric Magruder 12, Wayne Jefferson 5, Glenn Grover 11, Emmanuel Selden 6, Jacoby York 19, Jamario Bassett 10, Jordan Hill 7, Orpheus Rankins 10, and Kenwan Davis 12, assuming no mistakes for the Warriors. Jonathan Brooks 10, Desmond Conway 14, Kenyon Meese 15, Jalen Mack 6, Ian McAllister 3, Jacob Tincher, the player of the game with 25 points. Even though his team fell, he is the player of the game. Coming up next, the men from Tacoa Falls College taking on Blue Lights College. That game will start at 5 p.m., so we're going to have a little bit of time before that tip-off. We're going to end this feed now and start up again just a few minutes before 5 o'clock. Thanks for joining us here and everybody letting us know you're watching on TBC Eagles. I'm Ray Bureau. Come back at 5 o'clock.